scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you i'm really speaking passionately to the body of christ tonight and this concerns every one of us because we're a part of it i want to challenge one of the things the Bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address. When you read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning from verse 10, the Bible says, When he led captivity captive, he went down to hell. And the Bible records that he gave gifts to men. Are we together now? He said, He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that. And then he says, He gave this fivefold for certain things. For the ex perfecting maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry what's the work of the ministry kingdom advancement right then it says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ so it is God's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of Christ called the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. The unity of the faith. A level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice. That when we speak, creation, human beings, government, systems, will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one are we together now one of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church that makes the pursuit of God look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person. As though God is not interested in the corporate growth of the body. Are we together now? So we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of God. That's how it comes. It comes through a person, but it is for a people. Are we together now? And this, this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of Christ because we have not been able to attain onto that point of unity, maturity, and perfection. It's been a mighty tool that Satan has used. And so, in the next two or three weeks, we are going to be examining the concept of, of uh, this statement that they may be one. The concept of the unity of the faith. But to start off tonight, I want to um, take on, you would call it a subtopic. I call it three great errors. Three great errors. I will see of the wonders of your word i will seek out for joy i will seek of the wonders of your word 
And I will forever sing your praise. Yes, we will forever sing your praise. Give us revelation tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 25. Let's start off from there. Three great errors that I believe has caused havoc in the body of Christ, has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers, many ministries, many well-meaning people who love the Lord and desire the pursuit of godliness. Exodus 25 and verse 40. This was the construction of the tabernacle media. You need to help us very, very fast um, today. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read together. One, to read. And look that thou make them after what? Their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. If you can have amplified, that would be great. Hallelujah. It says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done according to pattern. Listen, when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement, the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding God. Are we together? That degree of autonomy is not given to the believer. There is a pattern. There is a pathway. There is a system with which God desires to be known. And you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of God. Several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways to accessing God, but there is a system. It's consistent with the character of God that every time God gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself, he shows you how you will walk into it. In this instance, he revealed to Moses, I want to build a tabernacle, but there are specifics. It was on account of that that the hand of the Lord came upon Bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship. And here God is giving a warning again. He's saying, make sure under no circumstance should you become emotional about this building of the temple. Do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say, no, no, no. Instead of using gold, gold is not available. It will take us a long time to go and, uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that. Let's just manage this. God is saying, when it comes to this, you keep emotions and sentiments. There is a prescribed pathway. Are we together? It's amazing how many people attempt to cultivate formulas and methods and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to Christ. That's why Jesus ended that confusion once and for all. He said, I am the way. I lead you to the truth and I give you life. Hallelujah. The concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with God ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god listen everybody says spiritual patterns say it, spiritual patterns there is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom hallelujah there is a spiritual formula for being a father the only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula. When you guess your own method, it has severe side effects. There is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom. You guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around, there will be a side effect. Let me tell you something. You see the failure of governments across territories from Nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth. When God designed man, he gave a pattern. Are we together now? Our refusal 
to pay attention to the patterns of God is what is responsible for many tragic events in families. When you see a family, for instance, where it is the mother who is fending for the children and the father is there crossing his leg, doing nothing, for instance, that is a violation of the patterns of God. And the Bible says, whosoever breaks the hedge, please pay attention, the serpent is authorized to strike. So your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription, your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter. Hallelujah. Now, we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth. Everyone with his own um, self-exaltation. We pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments. We pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things. And these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be God outside of the Christ. You see, let me tell you something. When the New Testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in Christ, any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority, the supervision, and the jurisdiction of the Christ is error, is disalignment, and is apostasy, a deviation from God's patterns. Are we together now? There is a pattern for everything in life. When God anoints you and calls you into ministry, there is a pattern. When God anoints you and calls you into leadership, there is a pattern. Now the trouble there is, we receive the call and choose our pattern. Are we together now? Think how many times the people in the Bible refused to move until God told them how to do it. Moses is standing before the Red Sea and he knows the Red Sea can part. He knows there is a provision in the might of God to deal with that situation. Now Moses, as a person, did not know how it would happen. But one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom, there is a provision for dealing with that predicament. Are we together now? And so Moses had to pay attention to stay with God. And God spoke to him in Exodus 14. Tell the people to move forward. Stretch your rod. Part that sea with it. When they got to Jordan, you would think it was the same instruction given to Moses. But Joshua had to wait to receive another pattern on how to part the same sea. You went for a meeting and the Lord told you, let everybody lift his hands. Then you go for another one and assume if God said everybody lift his hands, that's what he's saying now. And he said, everybody lift your hands. And nothing happens. And he said, Lord, what is this? And he says, I'm a God of patterns. Is God speaking to us? There were times when the nation of Israel were told to stand still. Don't do anything. God will fight for you. Hold your peace. There were times he said, prepare for war. You are going to fight. Patterns. Our inability to understand. Listen, please. I pray that God will open your eyes. This is not even where I'm going to. When the Bible says all things are possible. Let me explain to you what that means. In God's multifaceted wisdom. There is a solution for everything. Only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition. Are we together now? The Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns. How God approaches things in life. His methodology, his approach to the issues of life. God's pattern is that listen if you do not have love for instance even your faith works by love that's god's pattern 
God's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The world has their pattern. Cheat, loot, kill, hoard resources. Patterns. Are we together now? The world prides itself in achievement. In the kingdom, it is God that gives men the power to get well. There are patterns. Our cultures have their patterns. For instance, they tell you when you get married, beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you. Then start treating her well. Are we together now? So that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity, the memory of what had happened will put her into order. That's a world's pattern. But God says, uh -uh. wives submit. Husbands, love your wives. And he didn't leave you to love the way you like. He said, as Christ, love the church. Are we together now? Let me tell you something. Dear, our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns. Consistently. In God's kingdom, if you want to be great, you must be humble. In the world system, you try to, like a political party, you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you. But here's how we, are, we rise in the kingdom. If I be lifted up, not if you, I will draw all men. Are we together now? Divine patterns. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll begin to talk about the errors. Ezekiel 43. When I found this, this was, this was powerful. I mean, it blessed me. Ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. Ezekiel 43. Is God blessing us already? There are divine patterns. Ezekiel 43, 7 to 12. It says, And he the Lord said unto me, Son of man, listen. He said, This is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. He said, And my holy name, the house of Israel, shall be no more profane, neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry, nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings. Verse 8. Nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth. Let's go to 9. Listen. He said, Now let them put away their idolatrous halotry, and the dead bodies and monument of their kings far from me. And I will dwell in their midst forever. 10. Son of man. Listen. He says, show the temple by your description of it to the house of Israel. That they may be ashamed of their iniquity. That they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns. He says, and let them measure accurately its appearance and plan next verse and if they are ashamed of all that they have done make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it this was a prophetic language he's speaking prophecy here it exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them. He said, look, 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 look. These guys are guessing around. They are guessing. The reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like, like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression. When when Balaam was called by Balak to go and curse the nation of Israel, when he got to the mountain, the Bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation. Are we together now? The nation of Israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. That was a pattern that was given. And he looked and he said, Ah, these people are blessed. I cannot curse them. He tried to curse them. But the dexterity of the pattern refused the cause from coming out. Are we together now? He that breaks the hedge, he that violates the patterns, 
the serpent not may strike the serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations he said tell them i want you to give them the dimensions because you see a man when you read the new testament the bible tells us that we are we are temples temples and so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet ezekiel he's saying there are dimensions there are patterns listen this spiritual alignment works like magic look at me please look at me i want to talk to you honestly brothers and sisters you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life elijah the prophet understood divine patterns when it was time to call the presence of god he didn't roam around guessing his options he said bring me 12 stones because he was operating with the god of the covenant bring me 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of israel he put a sacrifice upon it he said bring me water and there was blood upon it and he called down the god of heaven and god came instantly are we together now the patterns of god there has been largely a deviation from god's pattern you see when you look at a life that after prayer after fasting you lay hands on the person four gallons of oil and the person does not change and there is no breakthrough let me tell you among other reasons that person is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom let me tell you something please come you see ba if this guy has a spirit manipulating him whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom no matter what kind of deliverance i do the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery with him are we together now because the devil knows that the edge is broken he can find expression we see this in the book of job satan came to job and found out that the hedge was closed and he went back to god and said allow me allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression so i can pray for this guy and lay hands on him are we together now but he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of god the pattern of god you see someone sent me a text thank you someone sent me a text today and said um he said i'm tired of my life i don't even know what is happening in our family man of god i believe one word from you would change our financial situation and i said it's not true no i wish listen i i can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough but that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket there is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family are we together one they are not honoring the lord with their time no no no, no. let's even leave honoring the lord with your time number one their hearts like the macedonians are not even with god it says they draw nigh to me with their mouths their lips but their hearts are far away from me are we together now tithing is zero even when it is zero even when it is there is a bribe they walk up to god with anger and resentment spend everything and calculate what they spent later on and now say i spent 10,000. Okay, God, how much do I even have? 2,000. Okay, take 1,000. This is your tithe. That kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty. And then, to talk of other principles, you do nothing, you get nothing. Are we together? That idea of something for nothing is an illusion. It's nonsense. So that man is violating this pattern. And when he comes for miracle service, in his mind, he's thinking, Oh God, let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say, Your level is changing. And all through the preaching time, he's impatient. 
He's just waiting for where we say rise up on your feet because to him he believes every other thing I'm saying is nonsense. This man, you are happy, there's water in front of your table. That's why you don't know what is wrong with me. Listen, it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word and understand the principles of the spirit. And one of the errors that is even coming to the body of Christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me i have something for you tonight are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because i am praying look i know so many ignorant prayer warriors who whose lives is not producing any result their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another. Are we together now? We just finished seven days prayer and fasting. But there are, there are patterns. There are principles that you must learn. Listen, please pay attention to what I'm saying. If you are still guessing your life, you are going to be in trouble. Please come here, Jimmy. Let me use two people. Benga, come. Uh, who promised, come. Let me just use these three people. Come, sir. Now, watch this. These are great men of God. These are three great, mighty people. Listen. If I give all of them a mic, and I say in five minutes, I, I'm not going to do that, just an example. I say, hey, Jimmy, what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom maybe that's the question he has to ask you can you stand up and articulate the same way i look at you and i say how do you make jollof rice i have uh, get a pen and paper get one cup of water go and buy this and that add onion don't put it too early do this and that all of those rules are we together now I come to Benga and I say, how is it, is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health? Oh yes, the Bible says it by his stripes we are healed. Are you living in it? No. That means something is wrong. And the problem is never from God. Can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula? Are we together now? Number three, I meet promise and I say promise. Can favor walk in my life every day and every time is there such a reality in a man's work with god that based on an understanding and a, an anointing that comes upon your life you can walk in favor i can call one more person and say can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years i'm still moving forward regardless of what happens everyone say patterns please look at me brothers and sisters your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand it's about understanding the construction you have to know how the kingdom is built the systems of god's kingdom to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory. Otherwise, no matter what else you do, it's only a matter of time, you will be frustrated. I guarantee you. You can jump around and act like you are moving forward 10 years down the line. Because this is why you find out that so many people, this guy starts well, after three or five children, he's angry. He cannot remember the message he preached 10 years ago because he only prepared it for preaching. He preached it powerfully, but that truth has not been seated in him. What do you know? Which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation? If somebody looks at you now and says, Mama, I'm going to a herbalist tonight. And I assure you, you see this fowl that I'm holding in my hand is for you. We are going to kill you this night. I want to ask you a question, Koinonia. What will you do? 
I know what many of you will do. You will call me. Or you will call Benga or any of the leaders. <laughs> Apostle, somebody is, is daring. I'm a member of Koinonia. That's why you will stay first. You see, let me tell you. Look up, look up. Listen. If this is how it continues becoming, I'm not helping you. I'm only, it's like a musician coming for a show. That's what is happening. The goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying, my, this guy is an anointed man of God. No, there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you. Are we together? Like a button. At a point, you should be able to hold it. That which we have seen, that which we have heard, now you handle it and you can go places with it. I know it. I know how this thing works. Somebody looks at you and says, you are a failure. Continue praying in tongues. And you laugh and say, no, I'm not just a tongue talker. I know the patterns of God. I understand it. Listen, I don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth. If you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom, the days that will come will frustrate your Christian experience. Look at what is happening, for instance. In the economy now 1200 naira or there about one gallon of oil now, now the reality is that that's that's very painful but have you got the light that shines in the night in the midst of this cry some people have never had it this good what is responsible for it are we together there seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold even preachers i sometimes i really find it funny a man of god comes on stage and says look uh we're going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded he has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit and so he has exhausted every message four months into the year he's tired and then he comes and says well um why are you put looking at me like that it's not like i didn't prepare i've been busy you think ministries and then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out he does not know that there is a formula in the spirit that can keep men on fire 24 hours believe me when i say this that when people are drowning spiritually right a man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago five years later is, is barely trying to pray for headache something happened his inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up are we together now please look at me what you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point that's how to grow you don't just open your devotional and say, Today, let me read Second Kings. I've not read Kings in a long time. You are not growing. You are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the Bible, then when you finish, you just walk around, pray for two hours in tongues, just stroll around and blah, 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 one hour, blah, 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 two, two hours, and you just say, Oh, that's enough. I'm growing. You are not growing. Believe me, you are not growing. It's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show. That there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is is access to mysteries access to patterns he understands the art of war he knows what to do he knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy spiritual growth is not haphazard you can lay hold on eternal life you can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom if that is not happening no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach 
There are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth. To grow spiritually is not to get to the point where you can now start writing books. Look, even an unbeliever is smart enough. You can go online. What does it take, intellectually speaking, to prepare a nice sermon? If I tell you to preach on faith, are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages on faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures, remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say, okay, we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message. And at the end, somebody is saying, this is amazing. I've never had this. I thought the Greek word was pistis. Now you are bringing another word. Wow. And then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of Christ or writing songs. No. It's not a sign that you're spiritual. Your degree of alignment to patterns. Look at me, brothers and sisters. It is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say, my God, bless you. And that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved. Everybody say, I want results in my life. Please say it, I want results in my life. This is why, regardless of how spiritual we think we are, the people in our environment, subconsciously, they are not impressed and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver. If your life is producing results, I assure you, your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody. Nobody will say, yeah, stop shouting, Jare, it's too much. No, they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window. Eight o'clock you are at it. Is it wrong? No. But that you are believing that just that in itself, on its own, please believe me. You see, Ba, I may not I may not claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of God and the operation of the kingdom I know what I'm saying there is a way man walks with God that God will make your life a wonder there is a way a man thinks he is walking with God and at the end it looks like God is a wicked God I counsel people all the time. After years of spiritual activities, they return back with frustration. And they say, Apostle, I can't understand. I'm the prayer leader in my group. I love God. Every time we organize crusades, maybe in a, a place, our village, at the end of the year, I can't understand. Why is God this unfair to me? Is this, is this how my life will be? I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, Lord. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good, Lord. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me and believe me when I tell you God is a good God something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of god and you see 
that's why many pastors have to be careful. A whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor. Especially here in the north because we are very religious people. We are sincere people who are religious. So a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years he's teaching people something that is an error with such authority and audacity. They give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say this is the way. And when the child is saying daddy I think it's this, they say, I, will, I will slap you it's been this way. Have you gotten results through it? Don't question God. It's only God that knows what he's doing. Let's just keep on. No, no, no. Everybody shout no way. There is a way. Growing up, I saw many things. Well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about God. This is how we mock ourselves. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everybody clap for Jesus. They clap, say, no, 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 this is not for my Jesus. And God is saying, do you really know me? All these things you are doing. Look how many frustrated people in the body of Christ. Look how many people are sick in the body of Christ. As if divine healing is a lie. That's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in God to bring you healing, they are just watching you. It's when they hear somebody just shout, under the anointing, everybody says, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself? I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true but we must admit it. Our inability to understand his patterns. God is a loving God, but he's not an emotional God. If he were an emotional God, the cry of many people would bring them out of hell. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Yes, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I have watched the lives of people, even in Koinonia here, I've watched the lives of people when they came for Koinonia, with their beliefs, with their understandings about God, and they chose to receive the word of God foolishly, childlikely, and watch what has happened in their lives. Hallelujah. Patterns. Let's go to three great errors. I don't want to just dwell here, but I mean, I can stay here all night and challenge you. I took a study towards the end of last year on God's generals afresh. I've studied them so many times. So many times. But I took, I took, another study recently and it was as though I had never studied them I remember crying almost for two three hours in the night and say Lord what nonsense is this how come we lost touch with spiritual reality no symbol to charge the atmosphere for them no worship song as we know dancing around but these people came with sincerity and they activated possibilities in the lives of people those guys had results hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed verified not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're healed very sure that they are healed and the Lord reiterated it to me again son I will not bend to your pattern. It was when the prodigal son got up and said, I will arise. The father wanted him, but the father would not just get up and roam around. The son said, ah, ah. He thought to himself, I have disaligned out of pattern. When I was under the authority there, I lacked nothing. I wanted self-sufficiency. It drove me out into lack. Now I'm eating with pigs. Question. Did 
did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father did any demon advise him no he said i will arise let me tell you some things are not demonic it is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today i will arise and go to my father and say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i'm not even worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and the bible says afar off while he was yet coming the father saw him and ran to him and ran to him i am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of god our generation is not in ignorance Technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities. I watch believers now, and I'm telling you with all sincerity, the way many people are seeking God is not how I sought God. I sought God seriously. You don't even see anybody say, okay, let me get a concordance. They don't need it. I remember times when we'll sit down, we'll be asking questions. Ah, Jesus went to hell and preached a message. First Peter said so, and we are very fine right now. Believers don't say they sit down, gist and talk nonsense. Then when it's time for prayer, everybody say, let's pray. Begin to pray. Everybody begin to move around. And we move around as if we are making a fool out of ourselves. Listen, let me talk to you. I have a responsibility to teach you truth. If I did not have the results in my life, you will say I'm deceiving you. Are we together now? Many people call upon God and it looks like he cannot answer. And then we keep creating theologies to explain this. Brothers and sisters, he can be hard. There is a disalignment. We need to return. So pastor said, God is not a God of crowd. He's a God of what then? God so loved the world. Not God so loved Israel. God is not a God of crowd. I desire that no man perish. Prosperity is not the most important thing. All that is needed in your life, you don't need any anointing. Don't no nothing. No, no, the most important thing. If you have Jesus, you have everything. It looks like a very nice message. Believe it and see what it will do to you. It will destroy your life. That's what has happened. Let me tell you. Do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty? And so it is out of guilt you will believe it. People just say, "I hope you know." There's nothing in this life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you just feel. That book of financial intelligence I bought. Let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking. Three errors. Let me talk about it. Error number one that has ravaged the body of Christ is the error of apostasy. Please write it down. Apostasy. Open up your spirit now. The Lord will bless you. Apostasy. What is apostasy? A departure from the known patterns of God. A departure, a derailing from the principles of God. The name is apostasy. Two scriptures very quickly. First Timothy, please, chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Apostasy. The first error in the body of Christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with God's pattern. It says, but the Holy Spirit, listen, distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times, some will turn away, not backslide, turn away completely from the faith. It says, giving attention to what? Deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Who teaches it? There are doctrines in the body of Christ that are doctrines of demons. And when I say doctrines of demons, don't just think the modern church. Ancient and modern, all. There are doctrines of demons that are older than us. They subtly came. They look spiritual. Satan always uses it is written apostasy a deviation from the truth listen please look up the first operation of demons in the life of a man 
is deception to cause a man to err to manipulate truth see deception does not have to be a lie a manipulated truth is also deception i can take truth out of his context and preach you see i've shared with us again and again that this bible is a prophetic book please listen to me brothers and sisters the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want to hear there are native doctors that when you enter their shrine you see bible does that mean they are of god you know it's a native doctor but you enter you can see all other religious books and then he adds the bible he can even say let's before i even pray before we cut this chicken turn to psalm psalm five now you are reading listen you are reading the bible i say ah psalm five this guy this guy is making sense ah I'm, i did say, ah yeah i'm telling you I'm, I'm a traditionalist but my own is different apostasy a deviation from truth there are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from god they had something but it was not the spirit of god and they misled people every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of god is witchcraft whether the operator of it is aware or not the operator may be innocent but it does not justify the operation are we together now how many marriages have broken in the church because somebody got up and said ah um i don't know what is i'm seeing martha leave your husband because as i'm looking at you now i'm seeing that um there is a spirit and they will can't even tell you the name of the spirit the name of the spirit is a and b and c pastors have left wives people are beating people parents have disowned children they have called innocent people mommy water if somebody who is in his right senses was born he has birth certificate from the hospital you now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things now listen i'm not laughing i'm serious because i'm going to balance it there are many people who have carried the illusion right now they walk around saying i'm a witch he said who told you he said a man of god that's why i came for miracle service they said i am a witch the man of god has never paid attention to find out what the bible calls a witch what is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard are we together now and this has misled people how about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy his name is benga he likes keeping malu he will sit down by your left if you don't marry this guy your life is finished and for 10 years that lady is roaming around nigeria looking for benga moving all around we've discussed this under challenging discussions on late marriage there is a balance to it because there are times that it is true see when truth notice when truth is manipulated it becomes witchcraft apostasy so many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe i'm challenging people that rubbish demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell please look up came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important the most important thing is that jesus is lord of your life and you are heaven bound that's a doctrine of demons it's popular it's taught by conservatives but it's still demonic money is the root of all evil doctrines of demons it came from the pit of hell by sincere people well-meaning don't confuse i'm not saying those who brought it are demonic it is devilish and it is terrible because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives other doctrines prayer is not important you hear people say that kind of thing prayer is not important they even laugh and mock and you see some people pray bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing and demons are saying we like we like this congregation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint another doctrine of demon once demons once you are praying 
and you don't have any business with the word just pray it's still the same thing are we together now there are all kinds of episodes of lies sugar-coated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of Christ apostasy a deviation from the truth men of God have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects some of these ways of raising money I, I say you know that I love the body of Christ but I must say it we think it's nice we think it's marketable but some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga it was under strong transcendental meditations they received some of this formula and then we watch their videos on youtube and say wow so this is how you raise money in the church and then you now come and we apply all kinds of things now the man may be genuinely anointed but there is a mix an aberration it's called apostasy a deviation from the truth some of us right now you have believed something that is not of god and that's what has authorized satan regardless of your prayer he still finds expression in your life there are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends it doesn't matter the most important thing is marry one they even tell themselves it looks nice and they say man of god i have like 10 guys the last guy just came two weeks ago just can you help me which one do you think will be a nice guy because a doctrine was marketed to you are we together another the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing is making men in the body of christ demigods are we together now usurping authority not just spiritual guidance but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people the disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things there is a place for that but i've always frowned at such imbalances that have destroyed the body of christ so we have offshoots of these kinds of things people who kneel down and hands up in church churches where they flog people oh you are not aware of it it has happened to some of you that's why you are quiet you are just looking because it has happened listen i don't say this in a cynical way i came with my heart to pour it out this apostasy jesus prayed a prayer he said that they may be one they will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength doctrines of devils right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations are we together now if you want to rise you have to come into it's almost like a cabal like a cult you never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things and at extreme levels at least it's not strange in the body of christ we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies how many men of God have been caught with drugs at airports? Customs grounded them. Right? Do you think the man of God started selling drugs like that? He started innocently. The first day he went on TV, he paid almost one million. He said, ah, there must be another way of raising money. And somebody said, continue going. We, we are telling you this thing. We know how it works. And say, together with your preaching, you buy the shoe that has uh, whatever. You put cocaine. If you ship that one successfully, they transfer the money to your account. Who will know? After all, it's just your spirit that is saved. Your, 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 your body, your spirit is going to heaven. Your body will be transformed. All kinds of theology. Apostasy. It may not concern you now. But if you don't pay attention to it, you'll be very surprised. A man of God once said, and I've shared it here, how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons. And after he finished the ministration, he, he saw the crowd. Within a year, there were well over 4,000 people. And he looked at him and said, ah, in this place, 4,000. He laughed and said, Daddy, you think your oil, what, what you are releasing upon us? And he said, no. He told him, he said, go out. He sat down with his wife. He said, my daughter, talk to me. And she said, I will tell you the truth, sir. 
he said they went to somebody true story a herbalist who gave them a mic you know most men of god we have our mics they gave him a mic but that mic they slaughtered a baby like these are little ones they slaughtered a baby with the physical blood they did some enchantments and gave the mic if you are passing that vicinity and your spirit is not at a particular frequency if you hear that sound you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly are altar calls being done in that church you won't believe it <laughs> are miracles happening in that church you won't believe it you don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here Do you know what people do for this anointing do you know what people do for power do you know what people do for jeep apostasy and people compare themselves with themselves i shared with you a story years ago about a man of god who had a particular oil that was given to him you rub it when you enter the meeting the dramatic manifestations of the spirit and one day you know they were doing an early morning service true story and he's like assistant like this um he didn't bath you know because he had to wake up in the morning run to church, so maybe you just wash his face and he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room and when he went he saw the oil you know anointing oil just like, I, I thank god let me just rub this thing fast so that at least i can look nice i can bath after the service and the guy rubbed the oil when that guy stepped into the church I mean there were all kinds of somersaults and the Jew looked at him and called him he said what did you use he said, ah, I saw oil around your this thing and I rubbed one. he said you rubbed that oil may the Lord punish me as I stand before you and I'm lying or just giving you a story apostasy those who have completely deviated they are not of God or those who are of God but their doctrines are not of God a man can be of God but his doctrine is of another spirit are we together now it's still apostasy so there are those who as people are not are not um, of God there are not many of these kinds let's be honest in Nigeria popular to the stories people say everybody they are fake men of God everywhere it's, it's not true there are very few people very few and they are not even popular who are fake but a man can be of God but his doctrine there was a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of Balaam question was Balaam a false prophet so what why, why was his doctrine being used to admonish the church there was a doctrine called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which I hate now the Bible tells us about the doctrines demons praise the lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of God error number two in the body of Christ that will stop the body of Christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy we have a group of people a group of individuals and a group of men of god who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body for as long as their individual ministry is doing well 
let the body of Christ go places. Look up, please. These are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial. These are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things. Please look up. They are the kind of people who can see somebody like Sam being corrupted in his worship ministry and he's going down and they say, well, this is not my music director, so I don't care. They have the fear. They hate being controversial. They are the kind of men of God who always want a good name. They are the kinds of individuals. They, they don't want to be associated with any stain. No, 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 no. Let it not be. Those kinds of people, because of that fear of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual, have refused the power of God from finding expression. They are the type who don't want anybody to fall down in the church. No, no, no. no. We, don't, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet, lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, people say, what's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shebiu, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen, let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Mm. Titus chapter 1 verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1 verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many of the people, the believers and ministers in this group fear because of their, they are so conscious of their ego, their ministry and their reputation. There are so many men of God in Nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of Christ die than they stand strong to say, no, 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 but this requires adjustment. They can gossip about it in the secret. They can gather people together and castigate men in the secret. They can say all kinds of things in the secret, but none of them have the courage. They are the type that will see a sister and say, do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship? And you are wondering, you are her pastor. What is wrong with calling her and say, sister, I love you? They would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy. They are the type that they say, ah, oh, promise is in, in the police station. They say, please, we have many members. This is just one of them. Let the police handle their work there. Because he said, um, if his pastor comes, he can talk to him and say, please, I'm not a pastor of criminals. You see that? Overly conscious of their reputation. Let me tell you something. And I stand before the Lord of heaven to tell you this. If you have scars, I will get on my knees and I will clean that scars with you. Never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation. I don't have one. I've been controversial from day one. There are husbands who will not identify with their wives. Two years, she is not giving birth. And somebody looks at her and starts singing a song. Why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife? And the man starts distancing himself. The fear. Listen, if you want the body of Christ to become one, you must drop aside your ministry, your ego. Are we together now? Because you love the body. That's what Jesus did. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took on my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You are from my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my hands to you in adoration. Listen, by the grace of God, there is nobody close to me who I will see derailing and I will be ashamed to hold his hands. We have stood by people in this place 
with all kinds of situations i'm not my idea of being a man of god is not gathering that's why men of god do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind lame those ones are not sons the one who is a ceo the lady who is drop dead beautiful my daughter the one who is, is, is God, God is helping them, all kinds of things. She's sick, they don't have money, it's depending on you. That one is a nuisance. The fear of being controversial. The fear of confronting apostasy. They sit down in a place, they are the people who can be outside. And somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of God. Because of a misconception. And they have the opportunity to say, ah, my brother whatever it is that happens you don't address this they keep quiet and the person who is talking is saying I, I think you are aware you know that a jimmy is not serious with god the guy will be nodding but he's supposed to be a jimmy's member but he's nodding because of the fear of identifying we have people in the body of christ like that are we together now they are ashamed of identifying with christ they are the type who will never put a gospel ringtone they are the type who can never wear a shirt Jesus saves. Ah, they are falling their hands. They are the types who can never say bless. They will say bless you when they come for koinonia. But you can do every other thing. Fear. Fear of my ego. Fear of my ego. Fear of my reputation. When they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, that was what they thought he had the fear they thought he loved his ministry so much that jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute and they dropped her before him and said you claim to be holy this lady she's been caught in adultery what do you recommend and jesus looked and he says you see all of you whoever does not have sin among you cast the first stone and she was shocked when he went to the Samaritan woman, there was a time Jesus sat with prostitutes. He was not preaching. They were eating. And people said, this guy is a liar. When Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on Jesus' feet, people said, that's it. We've had enough of this. This guy is, is no, you are not straight. No way. You know Mary Magdalene somewhere. This is not the first time this is happening. And watch this. Jesus never had any pressure to defend himself. I know what many of us will do. You go and say, look, I want you to know that I just looked at her and it's not like that. I know she's somebody's wife now. What is the whole thing? Can't... Fear. Fear of evangelism. A guy loves you, but he's not sure you are a Christian. And God says, preach to him. And you say, ah, after this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fold my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no problem. Just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, won't you take two? And then you just take one cup too and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless, and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus, John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that, but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen, how many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day? and carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say god whatever it is let just 
let, let me there are many people I know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent but they have come to me in secret and say man of God pray for us sorry you know that it's just because of our environment the courage to be controversial those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival how many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around the courage to be controversial Titus 1 for there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle vain empty and misleading talkers listen and self deceivers and deceivers of others listen he said this is true especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that verse 11 listen he said their mouths must not be stopped for they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach for the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them Isaiah 5 verse 20. Let's hurry up. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Fear of confronting apostasy. They will not speak so you don't know where they are standing. Because if they speak, it may cost them money. It may cost them support. There are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths, members will leave and they will rather lead the members and teach error it's a dangerous thing brothers and sisters woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter you know those who do that they are the ones who come and say my goodness my goodness my goodness you preach, I mean, it was powerful. Hey, Jimmy, I can't, I can't believe what you did. And they go back and say, what that guy is teaching? Say a lie. They do not have the courage. Are we together now? Because of money? Because of faith? There are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations. Because they were given conditions not to preach certain things, not to say certain things. And they said, that's alright. That's alright. And it's growing. Right now, the media is trying to strangle God out. You are not allowed to say God again. Now, there are technologies that mute those parts. You watch it in films. People are saying, my God and my... And you don't hear anything. They've removed it away. But they can't allow any other curse word to be free. Because their subliminal message is programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God. How many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say, Look, we are business people, but this is my pastor. I am a Christian. I love the Lord. Ah, I say, You don't do that. If you do that, that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy. And so they don't mind behaving that they are not of Christ. They don't care. You are in a board meeting and people are saying, this is what we are supposed to give the workers, but we are going to chop this one. Just don't mind them, all these poor people. And you are there, you just laugh. When it backfires, you say, I didn't say anything. But you watched it, you would have enjoyed it if it came. The Bible says they are the ones who call who give. Is there any problem? No, 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 no not at all. It's all right. The fear be controversial that's what happens in nigeria that's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we're having because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined there's a man of god i love so much many of you know him pastor tony bakari i love him very well because not necessarily because i believe in all of his ideologies i love him because he's a man who stand i love people who you can define what they represent let me tell you never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody is a dangerous person 
they cannot define their stand you don't know what camp they are in today it looks like they are here tomorrow it looks like they are here they can become anything as occasion serves them they are dangerous people very dangerous people are we together now there are so many people like that there are people who come to church they are nice in church but you can if you organize one party they won't come in the out in the evening when the light has gone down they'll just run and say i just came around before you do it they start nodding to the music last scripture ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 and 19 the second category of people who are causing error in the body of christ those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of god because of what it will cost them ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19 listen if you say to the wicked if i say to the wicked you shall surely die and you do not give him warning are you hearing now or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way to save his life he said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require from your hand next verse yet if you warn the wicked man and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered yourself there are many men of god who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire and i assure you they will answer god the rich man is unfaithful to his wife you know it the rich man is into drugs you know it he carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church and because you need the money you cannot sit down to say sir please hold your money i'm more interested in your soul out of that one million you have already calculated two jeeps 10 10 million that's 20 tight 10 million instruments speakers i'll buy another rafo for my wife you have calculated it god is watching the fear of being controversial you can stand with one billion naira i will tell you the truth and tell you this is it this is not it number three is god speaking to us ready for number three the third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error hmm. pay attention to what i'm about to teach exaggerated confrontation of error This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I will dwell and then we will pray. The third category of people, those who are cynical, wicked by default, who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people, in a bid to prove that they are correcting they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of christ they are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from god listen there are many men of god today who preach against receiving the baptism of the holy spirit ask them why they will say i went for a meeting and I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? 
They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying three hours, eight hours, and they are not praying, they are the ones who are intimidated. The day somebody from the prayer group falls sick, they are the ones to let you know. Those prayer people, somebody has fallen sick. It's not all about prayer. And they say, I've been telling you. So they, they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark. I watched a video this afternoon that touched me. It was, a, um, many of you know it, TEDx and all of that. So I was watching, I saw the name. It says, the power of shame. And I said, wow. This is interesting. Let me. And then I clicked on it to listen to it, and it was Monica Lewinsky. Remember, uh, some of you were. T... Hallelujah. 1998. The saga between her and Bill Clinton. Right? Had a scandal. And you won't believe it, Jimmy. When I heard Monica Lewinsky talk for about 30 minutes, I'm not an emotional person, honestly. Especially when I'm under the anointing. But I found myself fighting tears. Because popular to the stories they gave us, popular to the way they lambasted that lady, a 22-year-old lady at that point, you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and nobody heard her opinion. They tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying I said this reminds me of our world I can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something what I wanted to say did not live to you the way it came those who sit in koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error say they understand what i would have said but somebody who has been looking for an occasion will say come and listen to this he will cut he will even thank god for i mean he will cut i said just listen to this line he said apostle joshua selman said the primary assignment of the holy spirit is to kill you now he didn't understand what i was saying he said can you see that and you are going to that kind of church <laughs> They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, Kai, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They say, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time they, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or correcting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy, from the standpoint of envy, bitter jealousy, the standpoint of envy. They use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table you know, there are churches that sell communion table, wristband, water, etc., etc. Now, there is an exaggeration to those things. But you do not throw the baby and the bad water. Thank God I'm not selling anything to you. But I've seen a lot of ministers, even communion, they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood. They are selling this. Ah, forget this. They are fathers of faith. What sort of nonsense is that? The people do not understand the mysteries. I've seen people insult God's servant, Bishop David Foyedeko, because of feet washing. 
you may not practice it you may have reservations about that but learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations and even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose it must come from a heart of love not from a heart of bitter jealousy there is a way i can talk about a man of god you will know i have a personal vendetta this is not about addressing an issue this is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression hear me if you belong to that group it must change tonight are we together a lady who is feeling bad about herself has a very bad self-image and may not work on it and all of a sudden she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say look at look at what this look at all your christian girls the way she's is true that that lady is nude but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude she is angry at the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough so she's using hammer to kill a fly she keeps talking about it i said something pain me today what is it see the way this christian girls dress the what they are trying to address is imbalance here men of god talk about miracles they say do you know that people stage manage miracles there are people who do this yes we know that there are people who do this but are there people who teach the truth are there people who teach the truth every young man that is prosperous oh they are drug barons they are this this they are 419 they are whatever don't mind them how can a young man be so rich don't worry i mean life has time your limitation what you believe you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody listen to me some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of christ i told you here you never hear me open open my mouth and talk about a man of god to condemn him if i mention the name of a man of god is to honor him for something i challenge wrong doctrines i would challenge things that i feel need to be corrected are we together but i will never tear down another man's ministry because i'm trying to show you hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom it will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact thank god for the wonderful things he's doing through us but i am aware you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of god who love god with all their heart some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a catholic church because of your cynicism oh holy mary they do this and that and that and that and god brings somebody to your life who can bless you but that stigma because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalanced you have closed your heart somebody from another denomination cooks food for you he said god forbid me i can't eat this what has that got to do with the food there are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages once it is not your member with your church having your wristband or having the pastors or, or all kinds of things you fight everybody let me tell you it is a lie from the pit of hell don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit is in itself is an error jesus said i pray that they may be one that's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say oh the god of koinonia I don't have a problem with it honestly but i personally for organizational purposes no we give the glory to god and it stops there are we together three great errors the error of apostasy the error of indifference is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand they don't know whether you speak in tongues or not they are not sure they don't know whether you believe in miracles or not please look at me the second category they are the type who can go to a herbalist and still come to a man of god they don't care are we together now yeah they are the types who who will run and take drugs in the secret swallow panadol swallow fancy down, and come up and say look in the last 10 years god is my witness even a, even i don't even know how panadol what was even the name as if they have forgotten panadol how old are you you see the second category 
the day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious they travel and don't come to church the lord asked me to preach this because it's very important it's a message to us and it's a message to the body of christ listen galatians chapter 6 verse 1 two scriptures and then i tie it up and we'll pray galatians 6 verse 1 brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort listen he's teaching you how to confront error there is a way to confront error there is a way to confront sin there is a way to confront mistakes are we together there is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing and addition and multiplication to the body he says brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort he says, you who are spiritual who are responsive listen to and controlled by the spirit should set him right and restore and reinstate him listen without what any sense of superiority and with all gentleness then he puts a disclaimer keeping an attentive eye on yourself see that less you should be tempted to okay the guy came to you and said honestly i love god but last week i found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm i say ah go and tell apostle it's not even me that will say this thing but you see that and before you know it everybody in zaria knows that promise went to collect the child you destroy his life you destroy his ministry and you say i've always known it's not today there was a day the holy spirit was revealing to me holy spirit i'm sorry for refusing to hear you we we pride ourselves listen how many wounded soldiers i'm rounding up in the body of christ do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church i'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens am i am i endorsing it no let a lady get pregnant it's a believer who will come to you and say have you heard he say you mean you are here Kai, you have eyes you can't see are we together now a brother goes to ask a sister and she says no no I'm, I'm honestly i'm already engaged to somebody before you know it this brother says, i'm happy it's good for them blah, blah, blah. you carry and ship trouble it is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy may that never happen in koinonia in the name of jesus christ we have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry all kinds and God is my witness. I love the people with all my heart and with all passion. There are people who have come to meet me with charms. This is what we're doing. There are ladies who have gone to Zaria City and come to say, I don't say, ah, no, no, no. With all the teaching, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't do that. When a brother is caught or a sister, you restore one. Are we together now? If a man of God comes to, how many men of God have come to me? Man of God. I'm preaching but I'm caught up in masturbation or pornography. I don't look and I say you, of all people there's no such thing as that. Let me tell you there is no man who cannot fall. We are all products of God's mercy. I have learned this. I know that if any man is standing he's only standing because of God's grace. Grace your grace Lord I'm nothing without you Grace, your grace shines on me. Listen, that's how we treat people all around. You see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church, you stand and laugh at them. Ah, see this lady tying her hair in a certain way. See this one catwalking, and there are people who see certain ladies. See the ladies just wearing her trousers. I say, Look at them. These are all the prostitute ladies moving all around. What is this? It's wrong. Is wrong that love 
is what we do not have that's why we don't see the power of God we pray we fast but we have no love he said there remain these three faith hope and love but the greatest of all is love there is no ministry I cannot preach in there is no man of God I cannot talk to no matter I don't care who I love the body of Christ and I love the body of Christ passionately. Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors our pastors have condemned. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. Read this book. There is lawlessness in your church. Read Papa Kubui's book for instance. Maybe he wrote a book on holiness and God is saying read it. You need it. I say no 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 the church I come from we have all of this and you lose out there was a time during my retreat for one whole day the Holy Spirit well it started in the night but the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Papa Kumui's messages man that thing flogged me from head to toe just the greeting it wasn't even what he was addressing there was a spirit that oozed out of him that I, I don't know how many things I repented from, from that night in morning. And it was good for me. See, brothers and sisters, you must love the body of Christ. We are all going to the same heaven. There is none that will be created for only you. I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to stand by you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selman. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? This thing ruined the lady. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, he who does not have any sin should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came, she found a home. That time we used to meet in, in the campus there. Do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching, her baby would just be silent. When we get up and we start praying, she would say her baby is kicking. She found love found acceptance i used to bless that lady with money every time she was because of the shame and the reproach that believers brought to her life she said she wanted to defer i said you are not deferring you must finish and i'm going to stand with you i think a jimmy is a witness and a few people here i used to walk with that lady with her big stomach i will walk with her in front of their hostel amina and drop her there let anybody think what he wants to think. They say, the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy, are you sure that whatever you want to think, think it? Are we together now? I will never forget. I, I was so passionate about her issue. The Lord revealed to me the day she would give birth. And I told her, I said, prepare. On a Wednesday, you are going to give birth. That morning, she called in the morning. I was so happy as if it was my child. As she was giving birth, I was already appearing in Shika happily. When she gave birth, I said, I want the child. Where is the child? Are you the father? That's not the issue. I want the child. I held that child. Listen, I prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart. People were looking at me. That child's destiny, parents can choose to mess up, but children don't choose to come. Give them a right to enjoy a blessed life. Are we together? I have stood by people here in police stations. Oh, so, so, 
person is in police station and he said they should talk to you. Oh, this, he said you are his pastor. He said you are this. I said, what's his name? I said, yes, I know him. Oh, this person did A and B. I said, I'm coming and I will go there. I will appear there. Ah, ah. Sorry, sir. Are you not the person calling on Yes, I'm the one. They are our wounded soldiers. But we'll hold them to a place of victory. Well, I'm not a coward. No. Listen, I'm encouraging you. This night, practice that ministry. Some of you need to go back to somebody and say, look, I left you the day I found out that you were drinking, but I'm back to tell you I love you. I see the way you are struggling to listen to koinonia messages. I see how sincerely you have a passion to get back. I'm here to help you. You do that, you will see the power of God in your life. I never, never have never will condemn anybody see let me tell you there is nobody god cannot change don't you sit down and say me i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't do this just keep quiet and say lord i give you all the praise during our counseling session you see muslims come people come muslims because they know that i love them and i'm friendly i don't squeeze my face as if as if i'm the person who did this and say why are you here are you not no 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 everybody jesus healed in the bible was not born again but he still healed them i love them i play with their children i'm happy i have blessed the lives of people who today who have no business nothing in return for me please i'm teaching you something that will bless you there are people who cannot come for koinonia right now because of scars in their lives and some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars there are roommates who would have won to jesus christ there are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things but we are the ones who destroy them exaggerated confrontation i even hear that in many churches it's even an, a thing of embarrassment they come and embarrass the people publicly embarrass the parents misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly we don't even understand what god is saying whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere. He turned it inside a cup and kept it in a fridge. You would think he's Zobo. Does Zobo foam? Let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of God. Let me tell you, listen. I have learned something by experience. Once you see somebody over talking about a little issue, he's a victim of it. He, that talk is to create a sense of justification believe what i'm telling you the day jesus christ will come you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him you will think it will be joshua selman with all my ministry regalia god will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast because we who think we are great we are arrogant people and will not come to god but there are those who say lord in iniquity did my mother bet me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find him every time i go to god i don't go with a sense of condemnation but brothers and sisters i go with a sense of gratitude ah because i know I know what the mercy of God has done in my life. Are we together? The next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant, don't start asking stupid questions. You turn and see somebody, ah, he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to God answering altar call. He said, but bros, now wow, where did you go to that they hit you like this? It's over. Learn to help people. I'm not laughing. Three errors that are stopping the unity of the body. I love people. I love you whenever you see me rebuke you you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love I can rebuke you but when you commit the offense I will be there I wrote a song years ago the bandage is larger than the wound I will sing it one day for you I wrote that song to help hurting people I'm concluding Jesus gives a story of a Samaritan woman, right? A, a, a good Samaritan. Somebody was beaten by armed robbers. Are we together? A religious person came and passed and looked at him, not wanting to be unclean, left. 
a pastor came and looked at him and saw it and said no 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 i'm holy and left but then another person came a samaritan and got down on his knees and cleaned him whose wounds have you cleaned see the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover the ability to rebuke and yet guide to tell you no 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 Gulda is Gulda. it's not the way of god however there is a grace that can help you i am willing to help you i'll never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem she was seeing things she was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours they took her to security office they called her pastor he kept giving all kinds of excuses i refused to come the lady i mean she would literally fight with anybody bah, 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 praying supposedly overnight like for two days non-stop i just somebody she doesn't even attend our meetings then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me i said i'm coming i was at the security office i just got there and they said i should write statement i said for what I'm, allow me to find out what is going on first i will take any embarrassment if it is for you i will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom let me be controversial misunderstand me the most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day when we stand before him god will see let me tell you the day we stand before god you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven and you'll be surprised to see those who will be said depart from me ye workers of iniquity you will see somebody you have concluded upon who later when you died gave his life to christ and god used him who would have said saul will be the one to bless people who would have said so listen live your life with eternity in view do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom do not be a man of values when people are bleeding be there we're rounding up god told me if we can address these three errors there will be no reason for criticism again there will be no reason for anything strange there are people who wait for men of god to fall that's why prayer department and the rest pray for i mean they are waiting they are waiting somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money what is your business if you don't understand kingdom finances you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish oh the tv ministry he's doing he's doing it out of this and that and that let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed Joshua Selman has a three-year-old. This beautiful lady is his daughter. And he will say, you know, uh, my conscience, the same you, the same you who is looking at me right now, the same you who is receiving miracles, the same you who is a man of God with envelopes and kneeling down, they were the same people who said crucify him. Please reduce it to keys. Let's sing one song and close this night. There's a song in my spirit. Play, 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 Mike. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all will see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory i have a version when we all get to heaven what a day of surprises that will be because you will see people you never felt will make heaven you see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial they are not of god you will see them stand at the gates of heaven and you will watch the way the gates will be shot against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of Christ rejoiner when you read his book 
the final quest it was a revelation of the operation of the body of christ please read the book if you can get it i read it years ago and it blessed me and when he was shown the vision of the body of christ he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down and they were christians who were pulling their soldiers he found out that whenever any believer had an issue many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all christians may it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated i'm not teaching you to not confront error but it in itself is an error to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry a prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of god's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church what will a wise prophet do will you not calm down after the meeting you call the woman and say mama please don't be offended this is what i saw i can pray with you i can help you he just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and said what i'm seeing is a surprise well i did that and that and that who is by the name abc people clapped ah mama you got it right who is by the name so so person they clap they say two of you you know what you are doing and he just tore that ministry into two you think that's the will of god rise up let's pray jesus prayed a prayer and said that they may be one three prayer points according to the teaching very quickly and we're done lift your hands to heaven and thank him for this word the word will bless you in the day you need it this word came from the lord for you and by extension for the body of christ there are people listening to this message right now and he's healing them literally literally healing them give him thanks say father thank you for your word every moment in your presence is a time of transformation every time in your presence is a time of change you have given me wisdom you have given me grace first prayer point and i like you to pray seriously i like you to pray and say lord every revelation in my life that is an error that is already leading me the way of apostasy reveal it to me and bring me back on track lift your voice and pray please pray make sure you are praying inside and all the overflows make sure you are praying everything i have held on to everything i have held on to capable of destroying me doctrines of demons doctrines of demons persuasions that look spiritual but are not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom open my eyes oh god open my eyes oh god so that i will not keep the body of christ in bondage doctrines that have kept the church poor doctrines that have kept the church conscious of demons and spirits as against the strength and the might of Christ doctrines that have made the church powerless doctrines that have caused men to depend on the strength of the flesh as against the power of the cross Lord take it away from my life bring me to the way everlasting hallelujah prayer point number two i like you to pray and say lord where i need to speak out for you i receive grace to not let my ego make me watch other sin in error go to hell when i can address it that 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 self-destructive attitude of keeping my ego and allowing somebody go to hell that state of indifference i don't want to be controversial so i rather allow people in their error than to stand and teach truth lift your voice and say help me help me help me give me grace and give me courage are you praying koinonia 
grace and courage grace and courage the Bible says we all like sheep have turned astray every man has gone his own way grace 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 to draw people away from the gates of hell unashamedly regardless of the controversy that it will bring in your life regardless of how misunderstood you will be pray hallelujah before we take the third prayer point hold your hands together we're going to sing that song though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ lift your voice and sing it one time I don't care whether you are Catholic, Anglican, Mountain of Fire, Presbyterian, Pentecostal. We may differ in different things. But it is very clear that the intention of the kingdom is that we may be one. Oh, we are many. We are one body. We are one body in Christ. For the last time now, lift your voice and sing. Though we are many, yes, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, Put such love for the body of Christ in me. Not love for koinonia. Love for the body of Christ. Every denomination, regardless of what I agree with or what I disagree with. Every denomination, regardless of what I believe about their doctrines or not, is too small a reason. Too small a reason to fight. Too small a reason to tear down people. Pray. Lord, I love your body. Every denomination, regardless of their errors, regardless of the areas of imperfections, they may have made mistakes. They may hold on to ideologies I do not agree with. But I love the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ. My God is not only the God of Koinonia. He is the God of the body. And I'm telling you, ministries may make mistakes. We may all have our shortcomings. But the church is marching on. Regardless of the mistakes, regardless of the imperfections, the church is marching on. And the Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah. We are going to pray in one minute. Pray for every denomination, every pastor, and every wounded soldier in the body. I like you to say, Lord, I repent from adding to their pain. It was with my mouth I spread the news that destroyed them. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I pray. I pray. The same mouth I want to use to prophesy and speak to destinies i have torn down pastors torn down churches torn down men of god destroyed wounded soldiers lift your voice and pray and say lord i repent in sackcloth and ashes i repent in sackcloth and ashes are you praying I love your body 
I will stand with those who are wounded. I will stand with those who are abused, like the good Samaritan. When others are condemning them and running away, I will reach out with a helping hand. I will stake my reputation to see people restored back. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. We're rounding up. If there is anyone here who has an issue that you think you are dying with and you need an ear to listen to, I want to tell you, trust us. You can trust this ministry to be able to help you without condemning you. Are we together now? Those who can help people in the body of Christ are rare. There are those who help, but when they help, they will be the same people to destroy you. I don't know how many people's issues are here every day. Sometimes the people are ashamed to open up because they are wondering when they open up. And then when they open up, I just look at them and I smile. and say, you don't know when I started hearing this kind of issue. Let me tell you, there is nothing the ears can hear that I've not heard. So while people are coming and opening up, they are saying, oh, man of God, I don't know how to stand. I say, please, don't waste my time. I'm here to help you. And then, whenever they say what they think is the big issue, I just smile. And I say, there is a bam in Gilead. And I can see the healing. I can see the refreshing. I want to live my life helping people up to love God and walk in the way of righteousness and in the power of the cross yes i will do it a thousand times i will do it please let me tell you i know that we don't have counseling sessions but feel free i will give you a listening ear and i will talk to you and i don't no matter what it is there is a way out don't ever let anybody conclude on you hallelujah I'm going to do an altar call. Our time is up, but I want everybody to just stand in respect of this altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please, no moving around inside and outside. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Two categories of people. Just join quickly when I make. The first group of people are those who have never seen a reason to place their trust in Jesus and to give their hearts to him. You may have been coming to churches or you may even have been coming out for altar calls, but the truth is you don't know what you are doing. You don't know the name of what you are doing. It's been destroying your life. The Lord has been telling you that Jesus is the way. Listen, please. Win this war tonight and say, man of God, you just preached a message that has blessed me. You've walked in. The greatest apostasy is the deviation from the love of Christ. The refusal to accept that love is apostasy indeed. It will end you misery in this life and eternal damnation in the life to come. Those category of people. The second category of people, listen, are those who were once walking in the things of the Lord, but for some reason, past habits, past things, things you thought you had overcome, you didn't even know when they resurfaced in your life and you are dying slowly. And you are saying, I need to run to the Lord. It doesn't have to be anything immoral. It could be anything. Anger. You thought you had given it up. Now that God is lifting you, you are already seeing it manifest full bloom. You have lost friends. And you, are, you want to run to Jesus. Please, our time is up. I'll just count one to five. These two categories of people. Just run to Jesus and begin to talk to him right now. One. Two. Very fast. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first. There are so many people inside and outside. Make your way, please, very quickly. Celebrate them, they are coming. Win that war in your heart. Run to Jesus like your life depends on it because it does. Three. My soul longs and even faints for you. Please keep coming. Tonight is a night of victory. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears, trembling and tears of morning to the living God. 
the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing. aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one. Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he, ah, 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 ah. he said no man has this power 
except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they are all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and i will attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what watching. all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies a 33 year old man 
naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one. I guarantee you, people have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family. And every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him. Let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read down what? I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did 
man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this i really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. 
it's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father a worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life dear is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance 
is a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life 
do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if i truly had this life i should not be sick are we together now if i have this life i should be doing exploits academically if i have this life now listen here is where the confusion has come in the body of christ there are those who are saying you have this life there are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a curse i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're already together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today 
Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So, although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So, they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation? There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is the way. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time so the Bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part 
there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then he says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it as a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation Ejimi, this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this, his response now he's standing up it's a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah Ejimi, do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now 
Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not. Stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement and he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son. Who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen. It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender. And he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, oh guy, you know we're Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you. Listen. If it took God. Refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation. For your sake. Then I assure you. Whatever else it is. That is holding you. Must leave you this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying 
on the tonight before I came here I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her the devil was almost destroying her life had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby she shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer i want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none 
he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions 
run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. Some of you are crying. I don't care what you have done. This one decision. Remember Jesus. Every time the devil tries to condemn you, are you not the drunkard? Tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross. Something is about to happen to you right now. Oh yes. Oh, you slept with somebody before coming here. You say, well, I don't know what you are talking about, but I've been crucified with Christ. He looked at the woman. He said, where are thine accusers? He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood. The power of mercy. You just sing, there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as I pray for them. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters. Jesus can change your life. Don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back. There is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions I surrender it to you. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner. I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now. Jesus has paid the price. I receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt 
the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up lord i won't give up I keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a god that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if i were you i'll begin to prophesy over my request and say i wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life hallelujah now please begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly 
my goodness i tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why i'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love Feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain Let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women 
I went back to thank them and I saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that I said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said we should follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and I saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures I thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I was just looking, I was looking to empty everything I had. I said, what kind of grace is this? We went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, it's, you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself. And you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territory. And tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me
Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families, altars that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not, don't just fall and stand up. Begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness. And it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore I pray, every spirit, every altar, every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying He is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now
Kabarato soto Everything your hand touches dies. People come around to help you and they leave you. It's changing right now. It's changing right now. It's changing right now. Hallelujah. Sisters, lift your hands. Any stranger that visits you in dreams, lift your hands. Ay, 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 ay. Speaking to you, planting things. The Lord is giving this instruction. Every spirit husband, just for ladies, I tell you, many people will be free right now. At the count of three, it's like fire that will fall on you. Lord, let it fall. Every entity coming to oppress these people, planting barrenness, bad luck. One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Let them go now. Inside and outside. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodding. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray, don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth, we command the firmaments, we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily, according to the seasons of life, they receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The kind of performance. I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart Lord, you know that I wanted this not for myself, but for the house. At 70, you are still standing strong. At 90, you are still moving strong. Until you get to 120, no devil takes your life. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. The force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story 
I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person. And I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a man too. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment you can wear it, I pray. That honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on, your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background. They may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places. Strange honor in high places. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you have started, listen, something just came in my heart. Whatever you have started that ended prematurely, because this is what I'm, there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is, whether it is relationship or whatever, and it ended but not by God, we put life back to it right now. I say it again. Whatever you started that ended but not by God, by a manipulation of darkness, it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God praise, my goodness. I wish we had time. I wish we had time. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.